Welcome to Tech Mixer 9. I'm Jeremy Ness, the CTO here at Matrix Networks. And in this video, I'm going to be giving a brief overview of Cisco Meraki switching and why we think it's it's really cool stuff. So with that said, let's take a look at the portfolio. So as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, we have a whole lot of Meraki switches. So uh, it's kind of a brief overview of, of the portfolio. Um, we do have the MS120, it's kind of our, our basic access switch, single power supply. Uh, one thing to note about most Meraki switches is that they do have the fixed SFP ports. There's some exceptions, but generally every Meraki switch is going to come with four 1 gig or 10 gig uh, SFPs. So in this MS120 being kind of your, your layer two access switch is definitely one of the, the, the most common. Uh, another really common switch we see is the MS250. So this is a layer three switch that can do stacking, dual power supplies, and has 10 gig uplink. So very common to see these kind of in that core switch scenario, often stacked with um, you know, link aggregation set up to possible um, MS120s uh, in you know, specific closets. Uh, do have some other kind of cool switches of note. Any of the switches you see with an X support M gig, or that's uh, the multi gig standard. So um, here on this right, these ports can do two and a half gig, five gig, or 10 gig over copper. Of course, that depends on you know what you have on the walls or what you're trying to um, you know connect to this. Again, Cat 5e can do two and a half gig, and Cat 6 can do up to five gig. And then if you do have you know modern Cat 6a cabling on the walls, uh, the full 100 meters, you can even do 10 gig to clients. So I've uh, seen a lot more NICs coming out and, and desktops or other devices that support kind of 10 gig infrastructure. Also, the Meraki MR access points to another video I talked about, you know, the two and a half gig or five gigabit um, to the various sizes of uh, Meraki uh, access points. Um, we also have some awesome uh, aggregation switches. Uh, one of my favorite is uh, this guy, the, the 42532. That is 32 uh, ports of 10 gig. So, uh, again, this is going to be if you, you know, have uh, many closets in the environment or doing a lot of link aggregation. Um, you know, bonding together multiple 10 gig ports. Um, this beast, uh, you know, will allow you to do that. There's also a layer three switch. So again, you can do all of your you know, VLAN routing and the such um, on the, the 425. So um, how do the switches actually look in the dashboard? So um, again, if you are unfamiliar with Cisco Meraki, this is a cloud hosted dashboard, which makes it uh, fairly unique. Um, so no matter where you are, you can access your network infrastructure. So these switches don't have your traditional SSH environment, um, you know, access or you know, really web browse to them to make any changes, or getting analytics out of the switches. That's all done in the dashboard. So uh, as part of this demo, we're going to filter down just on the clients associated our network switches. So here over the last two hours, we can see roughly the amount of bandwidth going through our switches. Uh, of course, in our environment, we have two of those. So this is, you know, no matter how you're connected uh, physically on our, our switch um, access, you're going to show up in this client's page, which is really cool. So I can actually drill down and, and look at clients, or excuse me, the application traffic and, you know, what uh, attributed to each of these. So um, pretty cool there, kind of getting just a, a real high-level view of the applications across your switching infrastructure. Uh, of course, here on the switches, uh, or excuse me, the, the clients associated with the switches. Uh, and I can see their usage and VLAN and IP address and MAC address. And uh, there's a lot of other information um, that I can surface about my individual clients. Um, like one of those is device manufacturer, right? Uh, might be nice to, to see that, uh, of course, being keyed off of the, the MAC address there. So go ahead and uh, pick on uh, my own desktop uh, for this video. So here's some basic information. Um, by default, the host name of the device is going to show up, uh, but it's very easy to come in and give a device a, a friendly name. So I can see that I'm connected. I can see the switch I'm connected to and uh, the actual port I'm plugged into, right? And um, here's the device type, again, off of that, that MAC address being a Dell uh, event log. Again, this will give me my um, you know, port on, port off, or any other um, you know, notes about the, the physical port I'm connected to. Of course, you can do a packet capture. Again, very cool being able to do that on the switch port uh, through the dashboard. In my sysadmin days, very common to set up a mirror port or a span port with a laptop with Wireshark sitting there, you know, in the, the server room or uh, wiring closet. Um, much nicer, especially in a distributed work environment, be able to just do that 
uh, wherever I happen to be located, uh, so I have internet access to the dashboard, do the packet capture, download the PCAP to my desktop or laptop, and then you know, open that in something like Wireshark. Uh, I do get a, a pretty cool diagram here of how I'm physically connected. So uh, I can see I'm on port six on VLAN 20. I get some information about the port and the fact that my port counters are healthy. Uh, again, if I had a keybling issue or a bad patch cord or bad punch down on a, a patch panel, oftentimes those will surface themselves uh, um, in the error counters. So again, I can you know, physically see them on port six. Uh, this is a PoE access switch that we have. Uh, it's a kind of an access layer Then we do roll up into a core layer. So I can see port 48. Um, it's connected to port 23 on the core. So we can kind of end to end from uh, my endpoint through an access switch into our core, uh, get those green check marks. So uh, core screen is good. Can drill down in my specific applications. Um, the top three here uh, do not have any reverse DNS and don't have an application. Um, I did happen to go check uh, who owns those IP addresses before this video, and they happen to be Microsoft. And port 3480 happens to be Microsoft Teams. So as you can see, uh, I've been busy on Microsoft Teams this morning um, with that traffic you know, uh, being shown here. Um, beyond here, I can see, uh, yes, uh, we are multi-vendor uh, uh, you know, in our, our solutions. I can see uh, some Zoom here, some SharePoint, uh, GitHub a little bit. So um, again, a great snapshot over the last day uh, of my usage. Uh, again, get some network information again, VLAN, MAC address, uh, IPv6 address. So from here, um, it's easy to you know, drill down into the actual port I'm connected to. And in traditional environments, trying to just find out where people are plugged in can be a challenge. Oftentimes, uh, you go to the DHCP table or um, you know, figure out the, the, the MAC address, and uh, you go through your switches and try and look at you know, ARP tables or MAC address tables to try and zero in. Uh, obviously, in the Meraki environment, that becomes a lot easier. You know, their host name, IP address, or MAC address. Um, with Meraki switches, drawing down then is a breeze. So from here, I can kind of get some historical um, throughput data. Configuration on all things Meraki uh, tries to be very powerful and yet simple. So uh, if you're used to the white text on a black background, uh, um, you know, edit parts and trunk and access and all that, uh, again, much simplified on uh, the Meraki solution. Um, if my device uh, talks CDP or LLDP, I'd get the information. Uh, my desktop does not use PoE, so um, you can see no power draw there. And you know, clients connected, right? So uh, oftentimes, um, you know, I hear people, oh yeah, we have all these eight-port switches around, and we don't know where they are. Well, again, in a normal switch environment, you could try and dump MAC address tables and find ports that have a lot of MAC addresses on them. But uh, again, Meraki making it very easy. Who's all connected to this port? Uh, if all of a sudden I see multiple people here, I know it's probably an access point, probably another switch. Um, I can kind of often coordinate that with the CDP or LLDP information to try and narrow down where these you know, eight port mystery switches might be. I can also do a, a cable test. So this will show me any opens, shorts, and length of the cable. So we've actually installed Meraki switches and people have been like, oh yeah, this endpoint's always been acting up forever. And uh, we'll find that you know they're at uh, 200 meters, you know, almost double the um, allowed length of a, a cable. Uh, or they've intermittently, right, something's on the wall and vibration and you get opens and shorts and, and that type of thing. And of course my port counters, right? And Cisco parlance would be my show int. Um, to where again, Meraki tries to make that a little easier to access. So this is for a specific port. Um, you know, it's easy to look at all my ports and uh, I can get a bunch of great information about, you know, uh, port uptime and, um, you know, if they're using PoE and again, what devices are, are potentially down those. So I showed you editing one specific port, right, my um, port I'm connected to. Uh, but a great thing about Meraki is editing all the ports on this switch become very easy. So you know, here's all the, the ports and, um, you know, if I'm changing voice VLANs or something like that, you know, might come in and you know, I uh, selected some uplink ports there, which uh, it doesn't like and stacking ports and such. So um, again, easy to come in and, and drill down and just edit, um, you know, hey, I, you know, I'm going to make a big change and, um, you know, have my voice VLAN now be on, you know, VLAN, uh, you know, 80 or whatever that might be. So um, again, editing multiple ports uh, becomes a, a lot easier across the whole switch. Um, but the great thing is it's not just a switch, right? So uh, I can see you know, 51 ports are on this switch. Uh, it's my 48 plus my uplinks. But if I check that, here's all my switches, right? So uh, if I have one switch or you know, 100 switches in the environment, 
um, easy to come in. Of course, mass changes at that point become a, a little less practical, but really cool things I can do when I have all my switch ports on one screen is you know, sort by the received bytes across all my switches, right? So, hey, where are my bandwidth hogs at, right? Um, which again, you can only do having all of your switch ports on my interface. So um, pretty cool there. Other really cool things you can do is um, you know, I can say, show me all my links that are um, you know, only 100 megabit. In a modern ethernet network, I expect really everything to be a gigabit, right? So uh, again, this makes it very easy to come in like, oh, here, here's my 100. Um, and then um, you know, I can give each part a description, right? So as you kind of come through and, and hunt these down, it's easy to come and see, you know, hey, what, what's actually connected to that and, and why is it there? And maybe it's some old uh, crusty thing that, that should no longer be on the network. So again, visibility is really nice there. Um, switch stacks, as mentioned, um, we you know, do have stacking to, to physically stack. And then that's how our core is set up. I know uh, up to now, I've just kind of been mentioned, hey, that this core switch, we actually have three switches um, you know, stacked together uh, with 40 gigs. So I have 80 gig going to, to each switch. Um, and then uh, we do have one of those X switches. So uh, we do have some servers for our VMware, uh, Hyper-V infrastructure, VMware vSphere infrastructure, excuse me, um, that we do have copper 10 gig you know, set up too. So um, really cool being able to take advantage of that on the, on the hardware refresh. Um, of course we have you know, DHCP snooping, which you know, any enterprise switch you'd expect, uh, we're able to kind of whitelist the, uh, you know, what you expect to be your DHCP servers and I have rogue DHCP servers. The really cool thing about Rocky here is it actually shows me who's giving out DHCP. And I can actually kind of look at a brief, you know, PCAP um, of what that DHCP, you know, handout actually looked like. So um, yes, we have, you know, snooping, I'd expect that, but uh, you actually get a, a great visual on exactly what that's looked like. Uh, so many of our clients track down uh, unexpected behavior when it comes to DHCP. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have a layer three core where we have a, a lot of VLAN set up. Um, you know, doing layer three on uh, traditional switches can uh, be complicated to say the least, right? Uh, and Rocky, again, this becomes real easy. Uh, add a new VLAN, add a new subnet, um, you know, what IP do I want my switch to have on it and, and what VLAN, right? Uh, do I want to respond to DHCP or not? Yeah, I want to run a DHCP server. Um, you know, hey, I want to use, you know, Cisco umbrella. Um, and um, am I doing OSPF? You know, do I have a, a layer two Metro E or something like that or, or a multi-building campus where I might want to do OSPF? So uh, again, uh, Rocky really tries to, you know, be powerful, but, but, but simple at the same time. Uh, again, if I'm doing OSPF, I'm able to do that. Uh, ACLs, if I'm gonna do layer three uh, IP rules, you know, between subnets, um, I'll use layer four with the source port and destination port two, uh, easy to do that. Access policies, 802.1x for more advanced environments where you don't want anybody to plug on any port. You don't want to use radius or some other authentication method for wired clients. Uh, last thing I'll touch on is the switch settings, which I think is probably one of the most powerful screens when it comes to, um, you know, switches and Meraki. Spanning tree, um, right, loop prevention, right? Someone plugging in a cable on both sides and creating a loop. Um, I often see this just totally misconfigured in terms of who's the root and how are we calculating this you know, architecture. Uh, because Meraki knows about all my Meraki switches, this becomes much simpler, right? I just drop down, um, you know, give a priority. So uh, opposed to leaving any of the default and causing an election and probably having the wrong switch selected, uh, again, Meraki tries to make that simple. But then quality of service. This is the other one that I, I see um, often as a struggle in, in traditional environments, which I know I've been there. Um, you know, I had a building with, uh, you know, 20 switches in it, trying to keep all that quality of service in, in line and, um, you know, config drift. And when we deployed new applications, it was a chore to go update all of those. So um, with Meraki, um, again, if you have a traditional kind of voice VLAN with phones, um, you know, you can either trust those or you can explicitly set, um, you know, your diff serve tag to EF or expedited forwarding. Or, um, you know, if you do move to a cloud code system uh, with soft phones. So, Matrix Networks did migrate to a hosted um, cloud phone. And again, we're all soft phones here. So we don't have our good old trusty voice VLAN that we can apply quality of service to. Well, when we made that change, we came in and um, you know, entered all the published port numbers that the um, you know, hosted voice used. We hit save and all five of our switches all got that quality of service. So no more logging into each and uh, oftentimes setting up a access control list to match the traffic, to set to a, a QSQ, 
um, you know, becomes a, a lot easier in a, a Meraki switch environment. So um, that does conclude this, you know, very brief overview of the, the Meraki switch portfolio and uh, some of the settings that we think that really set it apart and make it a, a great addition in any LAN environment. So uh, enjoy the rest of your tech mixer. Thanks for watching.